Hi, my name is Gloria Casas, and I am a PhD student in swine nutrition. In this podcast, I will show the result of one of the experiments that we conduct to evaluate the nutritional value of rice cook products. In this experiment, we evaluate the effects of phytes on phosphorus digestibility in five rice cook products fed to growing pigs. This is the outline for this presentation. I will start with a brief introduction about rice and rice co-products. Then I'll move on to materials and methods used in this experiment. Then I'll present the results and discussion. And finally, I will show the conclusion and the implication of our results. Rice is one of the most important crops in the world and represents the main staple for more than 3 billion people. Also, rice takes up more than 500 million hectares of world arable land, which represents 36% of total land available to crops. According to the FAO, annual production of rice in the world is approximately 738 million tons. More than 50% of paddy rice is produced in China, India, and Indonesia. The United States produces almost 10 million tons, which represent less than 1.5% of the total world production. However, the United States is the fifth largest exporter of rice after Thailand, India, Vietnam, and Pakistan. In the United States, the production of paddy rice is concentrated in Arkansas. California, Louisiana, Texas, and Missouri. Paddy rice is the intact grain of rice, and the process to get polished rice involves many steps. First, the hulls must be removed by different mechanical procedure to get the brown rice. Then comes the milling that consists of removing the brown layer of rice to produce white rice. The brown layer includes several sublayers within the pericarp and aleurona layer. In this process, some parts of endosperm and whole grains of rice are usually included. This fraction is called rice bran or full fat rice bran. Due to the high content of fat in the full fat rice bran, it must be stabilized by chemical or enzymatic process. In other case, the oil is extracted and the fatted rice bran is obtained. In some cases, rice bran is mixed with hulls to get a product called rice meal feed. The white rice is 62 to 70 percent of paddy rice, and it is classified by size. The long and medium grains go to human consumption. The kernels that are 25 percent or less than the original length of the grain are called broken rice or brewer rice, and they are used in brewing or other fermented products or for feeding, especially in pet foods. So after the processing of paddy rice, almost 250 million tons of rice coproducts are potentially available for different use, including animal feeding and 1 to 2 million metric tons of rice co-products could be available in the United States. The hulls make up about 20%, but this co-product is not nutritionally important. The rice bran is 8 to 10%, and that represents 58 to 73 tons. Broken rice would be 5 to 25%, or 36 to 183 million tons, and the production of rice meal feed depends on the amount available of the other rice co-products. Now let's review the composition of these rice co-products. In this graphic, the red bar represents brown rice, the blue clear bar is broken rice, the green bar is full fat rice bran, dark blue is the fatter rice bran, and the purple bar represents rice meal feed. We can see that the brown rice and broken rice have less than 10% of crude protein, whereas the fatted rice bran and full fat rice bran have 70 to 15% respectively. The concentration of either extract is about 20% of full fat rice bran, whereas in other rice co-products it is less than 5%.
the content of ash is higher in rice mill feed due to the high content of silica in rice hulls. As suspected, the content of neutral detergent fiber is higher in rice mill feed compared with other rice co-products and it is 45%, but in full fat rice bran and fatter rice bran it is 14 and 20% respectively. The concentration of phosphorus is low in broken rice and brown rice, 0.11 and 0.27% respectively, whereas in full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran is 1.79 and 2.58% respectively. This is because the phosphorus is stored in the aleurona layer that is included in rice bran. The fighted bone phosphorus as a percentage of total phosphorus is 90, 91, and 88.9% in full fat rice bran, the fatter rice bran, and rice meal feed respectively. The concentration of phytate and phosphorus in rice bran is very high compared with other plant ingredients, whereas the concentration of phytate and phosphorus in polished rice and broken rice is very low. Phosphorus bond to phytate has low digestibility for pigs because they like endogenous phytates to release the phosphorus from the phytate molecule. This results in relatively large output of phosphorus in manure and reduce the availability of other minerals. However, concentration of phosphorus and phytate in all rice co-products may vary depend on varieties of rice, climatic conditions, growing location, soil type, and the quality of the milling process. In consequence, the objective of this experiment was to test the hypothesis that the standardized total tract digestibility of phosphorus in rice co-products is improved if microbial phytis is included in the diets. Moving on to the materials and methods, we used 96 growing peaks with an average initial body weight of 19.4 kilograms, which were all into 12 diets in a randomized complete block design, with 12 diets and 8 replicates per diet. One basal diet based in corn and soybean meal was formulated, and five additional diets with each of the five rice cook products were also formulated. In addition, six diets identical to the first six were added with 1,000 units or microbial phytates per kilogram of diet. In this table, we can see the ingredient composition of the experimental diets, where the ratio between corn and soybean meal remained constant and the inclusion of rice co-products were 50% for brown rice, broken rice and full fat rice bran, and 30% and 40% for the fatter rice bran and rice meal feed, respectively. The pigs were fed three times the maintenance energy requirement, and they had five days of adaptation period and five days of fecal collection, using marker-to-marker -marker approach. ATTD and STTD of diets were calculated using the direct procedure, and STTD was calculated assuming basal endogenous phosphorus loss of 200 mg per kilogram of dry matter intake. ATTD and STTD of phosphorus in rice co products were calculated using difference procedure. The data were analyzed using mixed set procedure of SAS with 5 by 2 factorial arrangement, and diet phytas and their interaction were the fixed effects and block was random effect. Moving on to the results, the graphic shows the STT of phosphorus in rice co-products in percentage. The orange bar represents the STT of phosphorus without phytes and the blue bar represents the STT of rice co-products with phytes. We can see that the STTD of phosphorus was greater in broken rice than in other rice co-products, whereas the STTD of phosphorus was around 30% in the other rice co-products. However, when phytes was added to brown rice, full-fat rice bran, and rice meal feed, 
the STD of phosphorus increased around 10%. Among the rice co-products, broken rice had the greatest STDD, probably due to the low concentration of phytate compared with the other ingredients because the aleuronal layer was removed. In contrast, brown rice, full-fat rice bran, the fatter rice bran, and rice meal feed that contain different proportion of the aleuronal layer where phytate is stored had greater concentration of phytate and in consequence, had low digestibility of phosphorus. However, even with the high digestibility of phosphorus in broken rice, the percentage of digestible phosphorus is greater in full-fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran because of the greater concentration of phosphorus, and these amounts also increase when phytase is added. In the same way, if we compare the values of percentage of digestible phosphorus for full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran with other ingredients used in big diets like soybean meal, wheat bran, or corn DDGS, we can see that these rice co-products provide more digestible phosphorus than those ingredients. In conclusion, we can say that STTD of phosphorus was greater in broken rice than in other rice products. Full fat rice bran and the fatter rice bran provide more digestible phosphorus compared with broken rice. And the addition of microbial phytase to rice products increased the STTD of phosphorus. And the implication of our result is that using rice products in combination with microbial phytase makes these ingredients valuable sources of digestible phosphorus in diet for growing pigs. Thank you for your attention. For more information on rice co-products as well as other topics in monogastric nutrition, please visit our website at nutrition.ansai.illinois.edu.